ahead and start. I had a very, very good introduction for her, <laughs> but oh it's going to eat up a lot of her presentation because it's all about statistics and numbers and things that we have seen in the last two conferences with stress, with anxiety, with depression, with arthritis, with suicide, with all this stuff that has changed in the last 18 to 20 months under this world that we live in. But I started doing that at our meeting today, and Cheryl was like, shh, I'm making my presentation already. <laughs> so I thought a different way to introduce her, because she's only been a part of the team for two months, is what I learned about nurses in chiropractic school, and this was 17 years ago, is that patients trust them the most. It doesn't matter how great of a dentist you are, a medical doctor you are, a chiropractor you are, doctors are all the way down here, and the trust relationship with nurses is way up here. It was almost like 87%. And so when Cheryl joined the team, she was here to administer IVs and give vitamin injections, period, right? For me, I don't like to cookie cutter and box someone in, but that's really what she got hired for. Within two months, she's obviously made herself <laughs> uh, she has allowed herself to shine and express what she is really good at, which is being a holistic practitioner under the RN title, right? What so on the, paper, on the paper, she's a nurse, but when I started looking at some research about the trust in nurses, it was all about Cheryl. And I just want to share with you, this, this was in January and 20 of 18, and then it came out again in February 2020. And, and I'm just going to read you the conclusion. The nurse-patient relationship may enhance the patient's health, not only with regard to disease or illness or a physical condition, but also the emotional, mental, and social well-being. The nurse-patient relationship also has the potential to strengthen the patient's own resources towards maintaining their health. That was what they said that you need to study more of. The patients actually listen to the nurses years later. Fast forward, they, this was the title, the impact of nurse-patient relationship on not just the quality of care, but increasing what's called patient autonomy in decision making. Meaning that a relationship with a nurse doesn't have to end when you leave the office, it can actually go beyond that. And that's what the study said, is that the relationship among nurses among other practitioners created the most amount of capacity for autonomy in the decision making of patients meaning that they focused a lot on lifestyle and not just doing this or not just getting this or surgery or whatever it was so what was really cool was that that's what we have seen from you in the last two months you're not just an IV administrator should you're not a, you're not just an injection you should not just a needle person because I wouldn't hire her. I, I don't. I hate needles. <laughs> but she is a person that genuinely cares about people's overall health, not just what she sees in our software. So thank you for enhancing you. the patient care. <laughs> this is what she wanted to do. She wanted to do a presentation about women's health, not just about breast cancer, but about overall women's health. So for the next 30, 40 ish minutes, give her your attention. Please welcome to the stage, Cheryl oh, Moore. Thank you, Dr. Um, what he said is actually really true. Um, in the hospital, I don't know if anybody's ever been hospitalized. I hope not too many of you and not for very often for long. But, you know, the nurse does spend about 12 hours a day with the patient. Um, any, anywhere between five and six, depending on your patient to nurse ratio. But you do spend a lot of time with your patients. And so it is natural, at least for me, to you know, just get that bond with my patients and just understand what's going on with them. What do they really? Why are they really here? It's not just the disease process. And many times, patients are there because of the disease, but there's so much more going on. So, thank you, Dr. B. Thank you, Megan. Uh, welcome to our women's workshop. Um, this is Women's Health. Um, it is. It is about women and. Ron, it's okay that you're here. Um, well, here's what's interesting. It's supposed to be on bonus. That's what they told me. Exactly. That's what I was going to tell you. That's what I was going to say. It, does, it pertains to everybody, but mostly this is about women, and you can tune out on the parts that you don't have those parts. Okay? <laughs> so uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started here. Five major health concerns that I wanted to talk about, and each of, each of these can really be a class all in itself but I will briefly touch upon them because they're very important for women's health especially. Um, one of the things I'm gonna do is 
since he already introduced myself, but I will give you guys, you can pass it around. Um, it's my bio. Just gives you a little bit more of my background and what my journey has been and what why this is so important to me. Uh, there's the five health concerns I'm just going to talk about briefly are osteoporosis, breast cancer, heart disease, mental health, and hormone balance. If you fall into any of these categories, hopefully what the information I give you will help you a little bit to understanding a little more about your disease or to prevent. And you will notice that throughout the slides, there is one key that is on there that I have been focusing on. And that's what the presentations are really about. So let's talk about osteoporosis. Um, there are many factors that cause osteoporosis. Some of them, I mean, they're listed here. I can talk a little bit about them, but one of the ones that I wanted to focus on because some of them are preventable. Uh, one of the things you want to really realize is that if you're smoking, I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely not something you want to be doing. Uh, it's, I know it's, a, it's one of those vices, one of the things that sometimes when we have stress in our lives, we go to smoking, we go to drinking, we go to things that are not coping mechanisms that are healthy. Um, but there are a lot of things here that you can read yourself in the pen name every single one of them, but one of the ones I wanted to focus on that a lot of people don't know about is sodas. Um, Melanie especially, she's our functional nutritional therapist, and she was like, can you put that in there? <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll add that, because it is true. Um, many colas contain phosphoric acid. I don't know if people, a lot of people know that, but as the body tries to neutralize the acid, it is forced to draw substantial amounts of calcium out of your bones. And so that is one of the reasons why Sodas are so bad, especially diet. I know that they, they're like, oh, do diet sodas because there's not so much sugar, because this, this, but it's not. It is a uh, marketing gimmick, and it's very, very bad, especially for women. Um, and sugar, and I'll go, that's another slide, but it feeds into certain cancers. So that's another thing that you, know, you want to try to focus your diet on and trying to incorporate other things that will benefit you and not take away some of that bone. So are there symptoms? No. Um, many times a woman and men, but mostly women, they don't they actually feel anything and they won't until there's a fracture, until there's a problem. And that's one of, uh, we had a meeting today and the gentleman from Advanced Body Scan was telling us about many times there isn't, there aren't symptoms until it's too late. It's already stage four, it's already stage whatever. And it's, you know, prevention is one of the things and he was uh, very focused on early detection. So there aren't really symptoms for osteoporosis and that's something that, that's why it's so important to start early on or even later in your life to just focus on those things that will help. So one of the things that our bones are pretty amazing. Um, once they're formed, they're continuously being remodeled throughout our lifetime by osteoclasts and osteoblasts. So it's a process. Um, what osteoblasts do is, or plasts do is break down the bone, and osteoblasts will um, build them back up, and that is constantly happening in our body forever, like until we pass, that is happening. Um, this process, like I said, it involves those in two hormones, specifically calcitonin and parathyroid hormone, um, but I'm not going to get into the anatomy of all that, but it's just some factors that are really important, and a lot of you are seeing me already for IV therapy. And um, I want to focus on those things that are in our immune boost bag, which are calcium, magnesium, vitamin D, and vitamin D is our injections, vitamin C, and B12. And all of those play a role in remodeling that bone formation throughout your life. So it's really incredible that that is one of our IV bags, and it is a really whole, encompassing, and comprehensive IV. Um, for benefits that we need. Okay, so how is it prevented or managed? Um, obviously, proper nutrition. We talked a little bit about the sodas, but there are so many um, nutritional foods that will help with your bone formation and just supporting your bones and your structure. Um, Matt, uh, Melanie also asked me to talk a little bit about bone health. Um, each box includes a 30-day supply um, for you and each one has calcifood, which are, it provides calcium, cataplex, which has, it supports and maintains bone uh, density, which is important, 
Um, cruciferous complete, which is basically um, more like a plant-based, and it's basically in a in a you know tablet that you're getting. Uh, so you, that's something that's really important. Ostrophin, which supports your healthy bone function as well. So Melanie wanted me to just put that in there for you guys, so that you know that that is something that we have. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, regarding Tell me your name, Tierra. Tierra. Yeah. Okay. Regarding the sodas and like breaking down of your, like the. The, the calcium being pulled from your bone. Um, once that damage has been done, is that something that can be, like with the osteoblast, is that something that can be replaced? Yeah, so you're, like I said, your body's constantly breaking that down okay. by osteoclast and osteoblast. They, they kind of complement each other. One is trying to break it down. So if you have like a fracture or something like that, that's your body, your body's going to try to re reform that or remodel that bone. So if you're doing that damage, stop obviously because yeah. the more and more it becomes it's almost like your the brittle bone syndrome thing that you hear of it's because of that okay. so throughout our lives we do develop that as we age but with proper nutrition supplements that can be rebuilt and you can have strong bones awesome. another thing that I'm going to talk about is exercise and that is really especially weight bearing but I'll go to that slide so yes great question and there it is regular exercise bones and active tissue so it's sensitive to gravitational muscular forces. One of the things that's really great is that weight-bearing exercise actually strengthens our bones. So as we're walking and doing any of those kinds of exercises, our PT department is excellent in trying to create a regular exercise program that you can rebuild and help your bones do structure. Um, so that's one of the things. It increases bone mineral density as well. So the, what we were talking about, just that breaking down of bone and the brittle bones, that's one of the things that it'll help. So if you have a chance, I know some are working with our PT department, our personal trainers, and they're excellent, and they can help structure a you know a plan for you that will work for you, the exercises that will help you to build that. Okay, and then of course, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, especially with essential oils, there are some essential oils that are bone building. Uh, clove, thyme, and peppermint especially are the essential oils that help with that. Um, doTERRA, I don't know if you uh, think you're familiar with it, our office uses doTERRA essential oils. I'm a, a wellness advocate for them as well. I was doing that before I got hired here, so it was really interesting when I came on board to see that they were using that. It was um, um, automatically a check on my, on my box. So, there are three ways that you can use essential oils, aromatically, topically, and internally. On these bottles, you'll see, if you're familiar with the doTERRA oils, they'll actually have these symbols on these letters on there that will tell you how to use them. There are some of our oils that are blends and they cannot be used internally because they've mixed them with like coconut oil or other um, you know, um, carrier oils that you cannot drink. So, but if it has an eye on there, like a lemon oil, which we do offer many times, lemon oil in our water, when you come in, we'll kind of offer that for you because it is excellent for not only cleansing the system, but it's just a, a pick me up, really. Um, so, I said that using it aromatically, you can do it in a diffuser, or you can do it topically on your feet. The massage therapists use doTERRA as well for their massages. And the CPTG, if you're not familiar with it, doTERRA actually created a process that certifies each of their oils through a third party. Um, and that uh, is, is to make sure that there's no added fillers, no synthetic ingredients in their oils. So they're 100% certified pure. And th that really does help because when you go to the supermarket, you'll see essential oils on, you know, everywhere, but they're synthetic. Um, they are not, the type that you would want to drink. Uh, they're not, they're filled with, you know, fillers and other things that are just not helpful for your body. All right, this one is really uh, something I'll focus on a little bit about. I uh, did a little bit of research on the vitamin D injections. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with vitamin D or vitamin D3. There is a difference. Uh, vitamin D is a lot less expensive to produce and our vitamin D that we use is vitamin D3, and it's about 50,000 international units per shot. Um, the interesting thing about that is that our, uh, I don't know, FDA recommended daily allowance is about 400 IU. 
you will never get the amount that you need to fight viruses and cancer in your body with that. Orally, there are a lot of individuals who, um, who cannot absorb vitamin D orally. And so whether they have IBS or they have some kind of uh, digestive health issue, it's impossible for them to be able to absorb it. So the great news for us is that we have other options. We used to have the sun exposure, which was great. We walked out into the sun, spent 20 minutes in the sunshine, and it, and it synthesized, and we were getting that UV radiation, which is the good radiation. But now, because of the way the ozone has changed, everything has changed, the UV is no longer good, and a lot of cancers happen, skin cancers. So we can't synthesize it the way we used to. So one of the best ways to get it is through a shot. Standard process bone health, the slide I showed you before, with this right here, it actually supplies 1,600 international units. And that is something that Melanie can talk to you about if that's a supplement that you need. Uh, let's see. What else? This is what I was going to talk a little bit about. This is from the, uh, where is it? The, it's, it's an article that was in the American Journal of Medicine. And I'm just going to synopse really quickly at the, at the end. Um, I am injections of a large bolus of vitamin D, which is, is the one we provide, effectively <coughs> increases your serum D levels without evidence of metabolic abnormality. What does it mean? It just means that if you take a high dose of vitamin D, like we provide here, there is no metabolic change in your body. Nothing is going to happen except it's going to increase your D levels and provide that immunity you need from viruses and certain cancers. It's been proven and it's something that I've seen recently happen in medical field. The doctors never would say, oh, go get a vitamin D shot. You need vitamin D. It wasn't something that you know was actually talked about in medical field. How yes, often do you need that shot? So I recommend you get it once a week. If your levels are below, and I won't go into the NMLOs and all that, but if you're, if you're certain, if you, once Melanie is able to check those levels for you, if you are below a certain amount, and honestly, one in two people walking around are below the levels. Um, and if you are, I would recommend the 50,000 international units once a week. Until your levels are, they bring them up. And it will come up. Um, based on this abstract, this uh, study, it showed that high dose intramuscular vitamin D provides long lasting moderate increases of your vitamin D levels. Yes, Ron? Well, you said D and then D3. Is there a difference between Yes, the so when I was saying vitamin D or D3, D is what's normally sold on the over the counter. And that's the one I was telling you about that it's more synthetic and it's a very less expensive way to produce it, but it does not provide the nutrient that you need and the levels that you need. So, so D3 what you're is the way to about go. D3 is what we need. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And Thank another you. thing about D3 is that you, in order to get the 50,000 units where we provide in one shot, you would actually have to take five to 10,000 pills, the 10,000 <laughs> dose, or 10 of the 5,000 to get your 50,000. So just think about that in your body, trying to digest that, trying to break that down into what you actually need. Not only is that an issue, but when you take it orally, you should always take vitamin D3 with vitamin K2. Why? Vitamin K2. K2, let me explain why. Yes, and the reason is this, because um, when you take vitamin D3 by itself, it is a fat soluble vitamin. So it is going to create uh, art, basically a blockage of your arteries. Because when you take such high doses, <laughs> when you take such high doses, it actually sticks into your, it causes a stickiness, you know, into your veins, into your body. So in order to take it away from your, your arteries, you need the K2. Because K2 will actually send it instead of to your arteries it will send it to where you need but again we're talking high doses of oral vitamin d3 so the shot is the alternative it's the perfect solution and we provide it here you're already coming here get your shots um, check your levels make sure because honestly the the studies have shown the virus the way it helps the cancers this is just something that they do nowadays 
The doctors are saying, yeah, go get your vitamin D3, go get your vitamin D3 shot. And they're recommending it. So, and they're way, they're way behind. But I'm glad that they're doing it because everyone is low. Yes, ma'am. Don't remind me your name. Lara. Hi, Lara. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Don't different weight levels and age levels and different Effect. bodies would, like a big guy would need more than? You no, know, it depends all on your level. So a vitamin D3 is not a weight-based medicine. It's not, some medications are, vitamin D3 is not. But it is definitely something that, you know, if you check your levels and as you're doing your vitamin D3 shots, it will increase and then you can back down. You won't need that once your levels are corrected, if you will. So how do you test that by blood? Blood, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right, so there. Yes, go ahead. Um, I've been, I've been taking sublingual D3. Okay, so sublingual is a little bit better because it bypasses your digestive system. Thank um, so yeah, <laughs> but I would recommend that you still take your vitamin K2 if you're gonna do it that way. K2, well, that's a bottle of weight. Now some supplements over the counter actually do put in their vitamin D3, they have vitamin K2 as well. I have to check that because it's a mm -hmm. sublingual. Yeah, oh, so they um, do. Um, sublingual may not. Um, it's more for your oral, like tablets, capsules, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yes, and that, that can't get mixed into the bag? It has no, to be a vitamin shot. D3, if I put that in your bag, it will kill you. It doesn't hurt. Oh, okay. Yeah. She does a good job. But the shot is <clears throat> the best way to get it. Don't yeah, you cannot put it in your... that good. No, it's because I mean, she's, she's very scared of her needles. Oh, <laughs> she's very scared of needles. It's okay. Well, I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. Yeah, and what I try to do is I pinch you really hard so that your muscle pops out, and that way you kind of feel the pain of me squeezing instead of the shot. All right. Um, well, you're just good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and I appreciate it. All right, so there are some ways you can get uh, vitamin D3 through other uh, dietary sources, of course. You know, I don't know how many of you like liver. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. so there you go. <laughs> I've got a consensus of any, right? Okay, well, there's one way. Fish oil, your omegas, that kind of thing, that also provides some vitamin D. But again, some people can't absorb it. So you got to, and if you did a uh, consult with Melanie, it would be great because, and we're offering it this month for $99. That's the, the blood work, the whole spectrum of blood work, which is like 14 tubes. I'll take it out of your body, but don't worry. And then we will, she'll send that to the lab, and then she'll have a sit down with you free, free as well. Yes, ma'am. Does there Remind need to be your 14, name? Jessica? Jessica. Does there need to be 14 tubes taken? Yes, because we do, we also check for COVID antibodies. We check for a bunch of things. So if each little tube is actually uh, correlated with a certain test. So yes. It's an awesome, I've had it, and it's, it's, it's like it that amazing. Long. When they said 14 yeah, ounces, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> But to be honest, so Josh, our PA, he actually told me that it's only a quarter of a can of soda is how much blood is being taken out. So it looks like a lot, but it's not. It does. You see all the cells. Do you test for thyroid in that? They do. And she does not just, because you when you test for thyroid, your TSH levels, there's T3, there's T4, and there's and she does the whole spectrum. Because many times there are false negatives with your thyroid. And so what happens is they're like, oh no, you're fine. Your thyroid's great, no, no problems. But you're like, but I feel all these symptoms. And so what it is, is you need the extra testing, the so other ones. how much is a test? Uh, or the, the appointment with... It's not, for this month, it's $99. And it's incredible because it's usually 150 or more. So yeah, it's a great savings this month. We also have buy one, get one IV bags. So instead of the IV immune system that I was telling you about, it's like $169. But if you do this month, buy one, get one or Google is what they call it. <laughs> if you do that, it's actually half off the second one, which is a really great deal for our IV. It was the D, the, the D shots were on the sale shots, because we they, bought some. They are, yeah. They, where they were in September, I'm not sure now. Oh, I think okay. they are, but they're about 30 bucks. You so, do you do B12 shots? We do B12 as well. I did two, three of them today. Um, uh, so they are, they're excellent as well. And B12 has been shown as well to help with the bones 
all of it together. So you, in that IV bag that I was telling you about, you've got all of it. It is totally comprehensive. It is a great, great Is that IV. the one we get? Yes, I am. Oh. Yes, that's the one we get. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I usually tell people if you take oral vitamin D3 that once, when the day that you're taking your shot, you don't need it. You know, you don't need even your B12. Because a lot of people take sublingual B12 for the energy or metabolism support. You don't need it. Well, the one thing you can say, <laughs> if it wasn't Amen. for the bag, I would be. He has an incredible story, and he'll share. If you want to, want to listen to it afterwards, he has an incredible story. He is here because of a lot of that. He's credited to the IV bags. He's actually Dr. Pete. Yeah. <laughs> so this gone? is just a we quick little shot that uh, slide again. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <it's>, you're not <laughs> wrong. B2, the D3, I just got this from the R right here. It right. provides 50,000 IUs per shot. Wow. So it's really, really great, and we provide it for you. And as I mentioned, it does, studies have shown that they uh, influence some cancers such as colon, stomach, kidney, as well as skin. And basically through a... Uh, down regulation of cell growth in the in the immune system. So, mm -hmm. uh, for generations, we were able to get it, you know, through the sun. But now, it's a little impossible. Okay, these are just um, some slides about nutrition. I'll go briefly over these. Uh, calcium, of course, that is something that you know a lot of people are like, oh, I'll just take, I'll drink more milk, or I'll take calcium pills, or whatever to get the vitamin D3 or the calcium, but. We, there are many ways you can. Obviously, um, uh, <laughs> Melanie goes, I, I like this slide. Can you add cauliflower? Because it's getting such a, you know, a, 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 like it's so popular now, cauliflower rice, cauliflower everything. So yeah, these cruciferous vegetables are very, are proven to help with cancer and fight cancer. All right, so let's talk about breast cancer. As you can see the display, there are some uh, breast cancer issues here, things here. N Eight, one in eight women, uh, U.S., that's about 13%, will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of their lifetime. That um, slide is accurate. I checked it um, way before I put it on there again, because this was a, I had done this seminar before. I want to make sure that it's still accurate. It is, but um, not just invasive breast cancer. A lot of women will get breast cancer, doesn't, and they don't always get surgery or that kind of thing. So that's invasive, meaning they have to go in, they have to take it out, they've got to do radiation, chemotherapy, all of that. So that is, it's a, it's a higher statistic than we'd like, of course. Um, breast cancer symptoms. Often, again, there are no symptoms. Some women can feel, you know, like they're, they're during their um, monthly breast exams that you're supposed to do, self-exams, you'll have a, uh, something that will come up and that is obviously uh, needs further investigation, but most of the time women don't have cancer, you know, they don't feel the symptoms, so. Um, prevention is the key. Raw foods, again, like I was telling you, uh, this is some of the things that you can take on a daily basis to just help with that, to fight um, the, the uh, prevalence of cancer. Uh, let's see. One of the things that she, I especially want to talk about, and I said it earlier, was processed sugar. Um, it's in everything, you know, it is in a lot of our, our things we don't even, you know, people don't look at labels sometimes. And it's important because sugar will feed cancer. So if you have, if, you, if you're unaware that you have cancer and you're drinking sodas or you're eating, you know, sugary things, that's actually feeding you cancer. So, because it survives on oxygen and camp and, and sugar, you know, like that. Everything breaks down. So, if you enjoyed the alcohol, you know, <laughs> the wine that we had, just know that even wine will break down into sugar. Mm -hmm. um, pastas, white bread, all of that just breaks down into in sugar in your body. So, be, con be conscious of that when you're making the choices of food that you want for, for your body. Another thing that Melanie wanted me to put in there was about soy, and I agreed. Um, avoid soy. A lot of people think soy is great, but it's not. If, it, if we were in China, and we were actually eating fermented soy, yes, that is what they eat. And so it's a good product. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, the Chinese never, get, they don't get breast cancer. You know, they have, they, they don't, they're not the prevalence of that. And it's because of their diet. But we, we don't have that available here. We can get it. 
but most of the stuff that's on the counters and the soy milk and all of that is not the right kind of soy that you need, especially women for our breast tissue. Mm -hmm. um, it's very bad. Okay, again, prevention is the key exercise uh, for breast cancer as well. One of the things I want to tell you, if you can, I mean, I know a lot, no one likes to take a shower every single day or sweat like that, but we do offer sauna here. And one of the things that has been proven is to rid your body of toxins daily. Uh, we are bombarded with toxins, whether it's harmful chemicals that we ourselves are putting on our body, whether it's shampoos, that kind of thing, or just um, from being outside in the environment, you know, that we're constantly bombarded with chemicals. So one of the best ways that you can uh, do that is by just going in a, I don't know, a 30 minute walk vigorously and try to sweat out through your, through your, you know, your pores and that those toxins that you get every single, every single day. Okay. Another great cancer fighter that I want to talk about is turmeric. Um, it's a, it's an, curcumin is the main ingredient in the Indian spice turmeric, and it is a potential cancer fighter. It's very, very good. Lab studies have shown that it can actually suppress um, the transformation, proliferation, and invasion of cancer cells. So it is an awesome product. Uh, we have several ways that you can get it here if you don't have a reputable source. Turmeric forte, which is what Melanie wanted me to put in there. That is one of the ones we do offer here, and it is really good. Uh, another one is uh, turmeric oil from doTERRA, and they have also some capsules, but they are oil, the capsules are just the oil in a capsule, so it's easier for people to take. But the turmeric uh, from doTERRA is an oil, so it's different than the supplement that you would take. It's more potent. Uh, is it like the rest of it? No, okay. because it's in the oil form, it's definitely a better way. How do you yeah. take the, 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 I just bought some oil, but I don't know how to use it. Okay, oh, the turmeric oil you bought? Okay, I can tell you later. Um, if there's an easier way. And make sure that black pepper is a good absorber for that. So we'll talk about that for sure, Laura. Okay, so more cancer fibers. Again, these are just some slides to put it together. You know, tomatoes and... This on the, that looks like little pebbles is actually boswellia, which is frankincense. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard, um, you know, Jesus, frankincense, myrrh, you know, they all brought that, the three wise men brought Very that to Jesus. Very expensive, but it is excellent at fighting cancer. It has been proven. I have several articles from medical journals that have actually shown that as well. And of course, our vitamin D3, again, uh, the shots, we can provide them right here. And like I said before, it has been proven to help with some cancers and building up your immune system. All right, here are some essential oils that are good for breast cancer as well. I have a friend of mine who is fighting breast cancer now. Um, she went uh, through, she tried to go to chemotherapy once <laughs> and she was in a wheelchair the next day. So she stopped. She's like, I'm not doing it. I'm doing everything holistically. And thank God it was at early stages. So she was able to fight it and she's in remission right now. But I made a uh, oil for her that she would apply every day on her breasts. And it, was, it had frankincense in it and a lot of these different ones as well. Um, Melanie wanted me to put in cinnamon if blood sugar is an issue and it's kind of like a little side note. But if I have helped with several of my patients with cinnamon for their blood sugars with diabetes. Um, I've even got, helped them get off of insulin because, with cinnamon. It is proven to like in the morning when you take it to lower your blood sugar levels. So I guess it's now. So I'm an oil user. Cinnamon is very hot. So how are you, is, is, it, is it okay to take through capsules or will it burn? You can. No, you can take it through capsules. I actually like it after I brush my teeth. I put a little cinnamon on the bottom of my tongue. I'm used to it. Okay. And we are strong, but it yeah. gives you such a great um, pick me up in the morning, but it also fresh okay. up and all I just that. did it on my lower back one time. I was like, whoa, and I have a strong color. Yeah, no, it is. Okay. I would recommend if you're sensitive to oils like that because we have oregano mm -hmm. that is a very strong oil, mm -hmm. uh, which helps with candida and a lot of that, but also um, oregano and clove, which is very good when you have any kind of issues orally. If you have like an abscess or something that's bothering you, can, you just have a toothache. Put some clove oil on that, it's gone. They use it as a dental. Yes, I have noticed that they've been starting to use it in the dentist's office as well because it's, it's excellent for that. Okay, 
Any more questions before I go on to the next slide? Yes, Laura. I know doTERRA has two different cinnamons that they sell. So cassia, cassia, uh -huh. and cinnamon. And so cassia is they're in the same family, but cinnamon is the better one, like if for, for diabetes. Is that a difference between cinnamon bark? No, same. Okay. Cinnamon bark. Yep. Okay, let's talk a little bit about heart disease. Uh, we were just talking about that today in our meeting. Uh, heart disease is the leading killer of both men and women. All right, Ron, time for you to wake up. <laughs> in women, the condition is responsible for about 29% of deaths. We were talking a little bit about it today with uh, the gentleman from Advanced Body Scan, and he was talking, telling us, uh, he gave us a bunch of statistics, but it's, it's very, very helpful. Um, and so it's something that, again, when, the heart is diseased, of course, it's, then it's a lot harder to get back. But before that happens is when you want to try to prevent. Uh, so how do you know? The, <laughs> these are, this guy on the, on the, you know, just laying down there, he seems like he's chained to the TV set, but these are some risk factors. They are, again, a lot of them are preventable. Obviously, if you have, there's heredity involved. You know, my grandmother had it, my grandfather had it, and Obviously, that is something that is against you because, you know, but we were talking about that today even. Just because your mom and dad had it or your grandparents had it does not mean that you will. Um, hereditary does, hereditary, heredity does play a role, but it's not completely that. Um, and these are risk factors that are, again, most of them are preventable. Smoking, excessive alcohol, balanced nutrition, high stress. And we'll talk a little bit about more about stress in a, me in a moment in our, ne in our next uh, uh, slides, but stress is very, very uh, detrimental to our health. Um, my mom always said, work does not kill you, stress will. And it's how we manage it. That is very, very important. Um, it plays a role in every single part of our bodies. Um, and physical inactivity as well, you know, exercise, like I said, just get up and move. Because that's, you know, move it or lose it, they say, and um, muscle memory is definitely a thing for us, and when you get like that, there's, you can tell muscles just start to atrophy when you don't move them. So that is definitely something. Prevention is key. So has, is anybody sensing a, some, a little bit of a, you know, key that, yeah, so what would you take away from here? Fruits and vegetables. Prevent it. Prevention. Prevention. <laughs> yes. All right. Melanie um, asked me to put a couple of these on here. These are some heart healthy foods. Um, many of you, I'm sure, are already incorporating a lot of them. Uh, one I want to talk about, I don't know if a lot of people know about it, is black garlic. Um, you can get it at Trader Joe's. Yes, you can get it at Costco as well. I got a big bottle, bottle like that. It's incredible. Black garlic is really good for, well, garlic in general. It's an antifungal. It's an antibiotic. Uh, it will help with a lot, a host of, my mom takes it for her blood pressure. She's a real boss, let me tell you, because she will take the garlic and just chew it up. She'll take an onion and chew it up. Oh my. Like no problems. And I'm from Spain, so like that's, I think, a part of her and how she is, but I, God bless her, I can't. I actually take it with a, I'll take a banana and I'll take a piece of garlic, I'll cut it in half, and then I take that in the morning first thing with lemon water. And it's really great for um, just keeping your uh, arteries and all of that open. So you cut a piece of, you're not using like the- Garlic the, clove. Uh, okay. One garlic clove, oh, not cut the it black in half, garlic. and I put banana in my mouth and I swallow it. Because that's not, not black garlic? Sure. Not the black garlic, okay. that's the regular. But the black garlic is actually soft. It's yeah. sweet. It's very, very sweet. So when you, you just peel off the, the like the little outside the uh, skin, yeah. and then you just eat it, and it's just so good. It's really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's huge benefits. So huge you would benefits. eat that. What are the benefits of black garlic? So again, it's the antifungal, antibiotic. It's got antibacterial properties as well. So they're very good for your blood pressure and that kind of thing, keeping your arteries clean. And um, like lucid, not lucid, but language where you know just it can flow without blockages is what okay are we good here i think you read them all <laughs> anything mm -hmm. are you guys eating any of these hopefully water oh, yeah. hopefully yeah, water so for lubrication of, water. of your joints water. and <laughs> all of that <laughs> all right <laughs> wonderful okay yeah but there's a problem with water mm -hmm. you have a problem with water mm -hmm. why all right middle man oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay 
Again, this is um, something that Melanie wanted me to put in here. Uh, Cardio Plus is one of the ones, the supplements that we have from Standard Process that can help with um, your heart, heart disease in general, but also just prevention of heart disease. Uh, it's a mixture of enzymes. It has some extracts in it as well that help improve your coronary artery flow. So that's really important. Uh, it provides, it's got magnesium in it, and choline, and she can, and COQ10, which is really, really good for heart, heart enzymes. Um, again, nutrition, strength training, cardiovascular, just getting up and moving. Here at LWB, we can help with all your needs, which is, it's really incredible. On my display here, you'll see lifelong vitality. Um, you can choose whichever products, you know, that you like, whether it's the standard process or uh, doTERRA. Both are incredible. Um, but some of these vitamins right here are really great for all of these things. Uh, I'm not going to read every single slide, but basically uh, it does help prevent blood clots. It helps with your bad cholesterol and your good cholesterol, increasing your good cholesterol. So one of the tests, I know, was it Laura? You were talking about what, what was in the blood work. That's another thing that we check for is your uh, liver enzymes. So it's a very, very comprehensive exam. Okay, so again, only the best because it's CPTG, there's no fillers, no synthetics. And these are some of the things that they provide, the vasodilator, heart tissue, arthrosclerosis, and cholesterol. Um, I had, one, one of the, our practice members came in and said she had some high cholesterol. And so I recommended some of these oils for her and also uh, Melanie did as well, give her a supplement from Standard Process that is helping her. <coughs> um, so these are just some of them. So how would you how would you do, uh, do that, ma'am? For the how would you do? Right. I know about the oils. We yes. use them all the time. But for like for the cholesterol, the lemongrass, the clear sage. Clear sage is wonderful. For it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. So do you just put them on your wrist? You, okay. So for arthroscopy, anything with the heart, you are going to um, reach into your basically your heart with the oils. So you put the oils here. You can do a uh, like a little roller bottle, and I'll talk yes. a little bit about that. Yes. This is the one, the one that I do for my mom. It's heart healthy. And basically she just takes it, you put it on your hand and you rub it on your heart. So okay. you're connecting the heart with the chakra. It's your heart. And then you also put it on the bottoms of your feet because the bottoms of your feet are the biggest organ to absorb your oils. So it is excellent for that. But those are some ways that you can do it. Um, you could take, actually let's see. Yeah, if you were doing, which one did you look at? Well, I looked at the, the cholesterol because I use the lemongrass on my feet. So lemongrass, clary sage, and helichrysum are all internal, internal that you can actually take into a like, bottle, a little bit of water, and drink it. So if you wanted to do it that way, you can. But a lot of times, they're not very palatable. So sometimes people just don't like the taste of oils. I, so you would I buy a bunch of veggie capsules yes. so that I can take they're, them. Yeah, they're also. excellent like that. So any for like oregano, because mm -hmm. I don't. And uh, doTERRA also mm -hmm. provides some capsules. They have veggie caps as well that you can just put the oils in and then take them. Okay, when so the you're under the weather, there's one that's a flu bomb. My mom uses that all the time. She's constantly mixing her little, into her little veggie caps and taking it mm -hmm. to prevent, you know, getting cold. Okay, so if you take the oregano oil and you put it with just a little bit of water in it. I would not, if you're, oregano is a very strong oil. Oh yes, I know. So yeah. I, I don't <laughs> take it, I give it to him. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I we're gonna talk later yeah. about that. I don't know, I don't know why she's oh, doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why she's doing that. <laughs> man, I thought you guys loved each other. That's terrible. But it sure does open the sinuses. It sure does, and it's oh. excellent, especially for Canada. So to get rid of yeast in the body, oregano will really? kill it. Yes, ma'am. But I, there's a there's a a protocol for it, so I would I would show you what that is. Because yeah. you well, can't I just just, just don't just take it. Stuffiness. It's like, yeah, it's excellent for that. I knew it was too but strong for you. But allergies, especially like you know all that, if you would rub lemon, pepper, and uh, lavender, it's allergy. It's for allergies. Right on your sinuses. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's talk about mental health. Um, this is number four on the slide. Mental health, and we were talking about this today, according to the CDC, it's estimated that 25% of adults in the U.S. have a mental illness, and 50% will throughout their lifetime. That's a huge number. 
Um, when I worked at UNC Chapel Hill, uh, I was working in the trauma unit, not the trauma unit, observational unit, and we would be able to look, look at the census. We would get all our patients from the ER because it was an OBS unit. And one of the things that I always noticed on the census was we had about, if there were 80 patients that day, we had about 25 to 30 that were mental health patients very disturbing um whether it was a child i've seen six-year-olds hitting their combative with their mothers that kind of thing to just depression you know lots of different reasons but they've made a they were a huge part of our er because there were no rooms in the psych rooms for our patients so they kept them in the er but mental health is an increasing issue for us in the United States, not only uh, because of our usual, but think about COVID and everything that has happened, a lot of people losing their jobs, just so much, so much has gone on and so a lot of deaths as well. So this is something that, you know, is really plaguing everyone and it's every age. It doesn't target just the old or the young or it's everyone. So this is something that at some point in your life, you will have something, some part of it, whether it's clinical depression or just depression, you wake up one morning, you just, you're sad, or you just don't wanna you know, get out of bed that day. It happens to everybody. Um, whether you, and as we age, dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, that is something that I've seen a lot with our older population as well. ADD and ADHD is our younger population. Um, but also our adults, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you keep, talk about like the squirrel, right? You have that much attention span, but it's true, we have that. And around 35,000 suicides per year, and that number has increased since COVID. Okay, so how are they prevented? Proper nutrition, again, Melanie is excellent so resource for you, uh, for functional, she's our functional nutritional therapist. But she has add me, asked me to add these 10 happy foods. Um, because they do, they have been proven, and it's dark chocolate now, not milk chocolate, not the, not the you know, the good kind of chocolate, it's dark chocolate. That is also heart healthy. Um, but these are proven to be happy foods, and by that it means that it releases certain uh, neurotransmitters in our body that create a happy mood. Exercise does that too, and I have a couple slides on that. Very interesting fact about the cashews. One large handful of cashews has the beneficial mood enhancing effects of the equivalent of one dose of Prozac. Wow, that is amazing. So, cashews. cashews. Uh -huh. So yes, think about I that, know. you know, as wow. far as what your, you know, they, they never told us that nutrition, you know, like I was telling someone today, they don't teach doctors nutrition mm -hmm. no. in no. school. And it's, and it's so, it's such a sad state because they, they think that nutrition and diet does not matter when it comes to diseases, and it does. And when it comes to mental health, this is really important. Okay, another way to prevent or manage your depression or mental health state is through exercise. Again, I just said get up and move, go out for a walk. You, if none of these are appealing to you, like weightlifting or rock climbing, there is something that you can do that you do like. And if you think about what you enjoy, outdoors or indoors or you will do it um we they're constantly i don't know if you've noticed they're constantly you know dancing down the halls over here because they're just happy and it makes you happy you know to dance and to just get up and move so do that um the benefits of their exercise i was just talking a little bit about it the releasing of positive neurotransmitters norepinephrine dopamine serotonin these are all happy hormones that will help you um as you you know feel that kind of like in the evenings or the four o'clock slump, you know, you kind of just feel down, exercise will help. It, it builds up your immune system. Formation of new brain cells, that's really, really key. Um, as far as Alzheimer's and dementia is concerned, exercise has, it just boosts that mental capacity and allows you to have more oxygen in your brain and continue with, you know, feeling certain way with the neurotransmitters being released into your body. 30 minutes of vigorous exercise three to five times a day, three to five times per week, is like taking a daily dose of prescription antidepressant. Because again, just those, that release of the happy hormones. All right, now, this is a pretty big, busy slide, but basically it just shows a little bit about Bacopa 
Again, standard process has a botanical product um, called ashwagandha forte, and I think some, some, no, she's not here. Okay. Are you, aren't, okay, you are taking it. So Melanie can further explain the benefits of it, but it does help with stress and balance your mood. So these are, again, doTERRA also has that. These uh, vitamins I put up here, if you uh, want to go into each of those, that's what it kind of provides. Okay. Just um, as a reminder, the cognitive function, cognitive function is what we're trying to increase here for mental health. Okay. Again, um, the certified pure therapeutic grade. These is what it help, These are the different oils that help with these different uh, mental state issues, whether it's depression, Alzheimer's, or anxiety disorders. Elevation's a really great oil uh, for that. Vetiver, which is one of the ones that we I have uh, given to many children that are going in school because it helps with ADHD. Got it? Okay. All right, um, hormone balance. This is our last thing that we're gonna talk about, uh, but it's a good one, um, and you can tune out wrong. Is this, <laughs> is this mostly, but it's not, and it is, but it's mostly for women. Um, there are a few, cortisol is one of the ones, um, that my slide here where it says triangle shaped organs, those are the ones that are sitting on your kidneys, they're adrenal glands. So um, when you hear about adrenal fatigue, that's what, you're, that's what we're talking about. Um, oh, really? it, and and it, is, it is pretty, I think everyone, to be honest, has a certain because we have that fight or flight, and cortisol is activated, and it help and it either takes you through it or doesn't. And chronic stress is the bit killer, but acute stress we have every day. Whether we're on our way to work, in traffic, whatever it is, your acute stress will always kick in, and that's okay. <clears throat> that's functional. But when you're chronically stressed, that's when you have health issues. That's when your body will shut down. And, and will kind of tell you, okay, I can't do this anymore. I need help. Um, so that balance is what I just want us to talk about a little bit. Um, you guys said that? Okay, so this is the tune out, tune out wrong. So this is what we're talking about. So um, our monthly cycles, women that are here, <laughs> the women over here, <laughs> we have, Certain hair hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, there you go, you can tune in again. <laughs> but this is, if you think about it, from the moment we get our period until menopause, that's a long time. It's a really long time. It's years. And, it's, and this is something that happens to women monthly, every month, every month. And it's not just your, the time when you have your cycle, it's before <clears throat> and after, right? It's the whole spectrum. And you, as women, we just go through a lot. But how can we help, right? What can we do to help this? So the I'm not going to go into all this slide. It's a very busy slide. But your endocrine system, I was talking about the pituitary. That's where your hormones are made, the estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And uh, that's just another slide. OK, so now what, right? Help is on the way. This is The next slide I'm going to talk about, this is a little bit about how to, again, that soy extract that I was telling you about, this one is not does not have the, it's got more of the fermented one. So the phytoestrogen from doTERRA can help with hormone balance, but also just, there's another slide that I wanna talk about because this one's too busy. This one, now this one right here is Clary Calm. Excellent. And so the, I use this every month, nobody needs to know that. All the men in here, you don't have to know that. But this is incredible every single month. I cannot be without this because it I is just, that use that. it is incredible. And, and, and it's women, not just with your cycles, but it's also through menopause, everything and beyond. Um, I just take it, I put it on, put it on my ovaries, my back, it's incredible. And it really does calm the pain and all of that. So it has several things in it. Lang Lang, Geranium, Vitex. Vitex is a really important, um, uh, supplement for women who are young, young girls who are going through getting their period. Sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't. And one month they do and one month they don't. So it helps balance out the, um, that. Um, and again, hot flashes for the women older for getting that. And the emotional mood, it just really calms and that's really what it is. It just calms through every phase of 
your cycle. Are you putting that on every day or just during your cycle? During my cycle. Okay. Um, sometimes I just I love the smell. Uh, oh, so sometimes like, I just like, like, oh, okay, just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I love it, but it's incredible. Yeah. I right. will say with that, I yes. used to take so many drugs as a teenager, and it's replaced like every single thing because I don't take any over the counter medicine or anything. But that helps every single time. And that's why I was saying is that for young girls going through their menstrual cycle, it is key. I've given it to my nieces; it's incredible. Um, I have so, a special needs granddaughter. She'll be 38 next week, and she had terrible monthlies. I mean, it was horrid on her. And we finally found the Clary Calm. Yeah. She will, I mean, she doesn't speak, but she knows where it's at. And, oh. and so and she, we, we put it on her every day. Yeah. yeah. And if we don't. No, it's one of the it's, best products, it's honestly. Excellent. Just excellent. And I, like I said, from personal experience, and I know there's some that you have, and it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, so, balancing hormones. Uh, one of the things that I just want to talk briefly a little bit about here is again is just through your stage through wherever you are in your um, life as a woman for your hormone imbalances this is important for us to just manage our weight exercise all of that nutrients those are really key to helping us through our cycles as well okay that's it uh, well not yet but finding balance at living well balance today i hope that this helps a little bit and a little better understanding for you and just something that you can take away from it, uh, whether you be like, I knew all about all that stuff, that's great. Then I'm glad because that's important for your own journey as well. One last thing I want to read to you, um, you know, my shirt says it here, but I, I made these little ornaments and I'll explain why. Um, so bear with me while I read this to you. It's just a little short story. My dad has bees. Today I went to his house and he showed me all the honey he had gotten from the hives. He took the lid off a five gallon bucket full of honey and on top of the honey, there were three little bees struggling. They were covered in sticky honey and drowning. I asked him if we could help them and he said he was sure they wouldn't survive. Casualties of honey collection, I suppose. I asked him again if we could at least get them out and kill them quickly. After all, he was the one who taught me to put a suffering animal or bug out of its misery. He finally conceded and scooped the bees out of the bucket and he put them in an empty Chobani yogurt container and put the plastic container outside. Because he had disrupted the hive with earlier honey collection, they were flying, bees flying all over outside. We put the three little bees in the container on a bench and left them, left them there to their fate. My dad called me out a little while later to show me what was happening. These three little bees were surrounded by all of their sisters. All the bees were female and they were cleaning the sticky, nearly dead bees, helping them to get all the, help, help the honey off of their bodies. We came back a short time later, and there was only one little bee left in the container. She was still being tended by her sisters. When it was time to, to leave, we checked one last time, and the container was empty. Those three little bees lived because they were surrounded by family and friends who would not give up on them. Family and friends who refused to let them drown in their sick stickiness and resolved to help them until the last little bee could be set free. So, what do I want you to take away from that? We're here at Living Well Balance to help you. We're not going to let you go alone through your journey of health and wellness. We want to be there with you. So, that's it. That was what I wanted. So, yeah.